Hey all, this is Reddit Tosker. In this video, I'm going to show you where the Sphinx is, how to answer all of its questions correctly, and overall how to get the optimal result for its quest. The Sphinx is located in the ancient battlefield area. You can see it here on the map. It is west of Vermont and northeast of the checkpoint town. To get to the Sphinx, you go through the dungeon. Eventually, the dungeon will lead you to the top of the battlements. You can fight a Cyclops here, but then semi-hidden behind the Cyclops area is a cave. You'll need to navigate through the World's End cave. This will lead into an area with a golem. Past the golem are the ruins that contain the Sphinx. The Sphinx will then let you choose between five questions, and we're going to go through the questions in order. First is the Riddle of Eyes. The Sphinx will open up a door that leads to a dungeon nearby and ask you to bring the thing of most value. But you don't actually have to go into the dungeon very far. As soon as you go in, you can look behind you, and there will be a chest behind you and above. This chest has the ceiling vial. This is the item that you need to grab and bring back to the Sphinx. The ceiling vial has the ability to capture an NPC, let you carry it around, and then break it to release the NPC. We're going to save this for later, because it'll be useful for a different set of questions. The second riddle is the Riddle of Madness. The Sphinx wants you to bring an NPC that has a high affection with you. You can tell that an NPC has high affection because when you'll talk to them, they'll have extreme blushies on. If you talk to someone and their face is red, that means they like you a lot. You might be tempted to use the ceiling file here, but I would recommend not. There are other more difficult quests to use it on. Instead, some of the NPCs that like you will ask to go on quests with you, They'll follow you around and ask you to take them to a location. Instead of taking them there, bring them to the Sphinx. The Riddle of Wisdom has the Sphinx ask you to bring her parent. To do this, you need to find a pawn called Sphinx Parent. These are found in the Rift Stones of Fellowship. These Rift Stones are in several places, but one closest to a town is the one next to Harv, the seaside town that Orica goes to. Harv and its Riftstone are located here, west of Vernworth. The Riddle of Conviction will ask you to give up an item, on the premise that you won't get it back. But you do get it back, it will be in the chest that it opens. I gave up my camping kit for this quest and got it back from the chest. Now the Riddle of Rumination is the sneakiest one. This one asks you to go back to where you found your first Seeker token. And it gives you seven days to do so. You need to go to the location where you found your first Seeker's token, and in that location, there will be a new token that you need to bring to the Sphinx. By the time you get to the Sphinx, you probably will have already found a Seeker's token and will have trouble remembering it. But if you haven't found one of those tokens and you're looking at this guide, be sure to put a map marker on the location that you first find a token. It will save you a headache later. All right, once you successfully complete all five of the riddles, the Sphinx will move to another location. That location is here, and you can get to it pretty easily from the border checkpoint town. You'll need to go down this ravine, but there's also a route from Batal. And in this location, the Sphinx will ask you another series of questions. But these, you don't get to choose, they're randomized. So I'll just give you the answers, and you can do them in whatever order you get them. One of the questions will be, how many riddles have you answered successfully so far? And this riddle is a trick, they're all tricks at this point because finding the Sphinx in its new location was one of the riddles. So if that's the first question it asks in the new location, you will have completed six questions, not five. It hints at this because as soon as the Sphinx is done congratulating you, one of the chests will open up as if you had completed an answer, because you did. You will be tasked to carry these little statues from the left to be in front of the Sphinx that represent how many right answers you've gotten so far and the answer will vary depending on how many questions it's asked you in this new stage before it gets to that one. Now another question it can ask you is to bring it a person that looks like this. And it'll show you what person. If you go in your menu and go in history, you can see a list of all the NPCs that you have. And you'll notice that this NPC looks a lot like Dante. Dante is located in the border checkpoint town. But of course this is a trick. There is also another person very nearby called Virgil, who looks similar to Dante but has slight differences. Dante will be on the Vermund side of the checkpoint town, and Virgil will be on the Batal side of the checkpoint area. 
I think that the Sphinx will always ask for Virgil. But in case that's not true, make sure you look at both of them closely compared to what the Sphinx asks for, so you don't get the wrong one. You then grab Virgil, or whichever happens to be the right one, and you could use your ceiling file to bring him to the Sphinx. I would still save it, but it's up to you. What I did was pick up Virgil and bring him from the Batal side to the checkpoint side, the Vermont side. And then I threw him off of these cliffs. I let him die, and I carried his corpse all the way to the Sphinx. And then when I got him to the Sphinx, I revived him with a wake stone. In this way, keeping my sealing flask. The Sphinx will then ask you to defeat an enemy in a duel, but you'll have to have a ring equipped that will make you do no damage, basically. In this case, all you have to do is knock the enemy down, go up to him, pick him up, and then just throw him over the side of the mountain. Now finally, the last riddle will be bringing a pot to a person in Batal. Batal is very far away, and you'd have to pick up the pot. Apparently, it's very delicate. And for this purpose, I saved my ceiling flask. Instead of dragging this pot from here to Batal, it's easier to go to Batal, put the person that you're delivering this to in the flask, bring him over to the Sphinx, and release him close to his pot, thereby completing the quest. At this point, you've completed all the quests, and the Sphinx will fly away. And if you let it, the Sphinx will just leave. However, that's not the optimal answer, because if it leaves, you won't be able to open the final big chest. In order to get the optimal answer, you need to defeat the Sphinx after having completed all of the riddles. Attack the Sphinx when it begins to try and run away, and it will engage you in battle. However, this, like all the other Sphinx-related things, is also a puzzle. If you just attack the Sphinx, it will get offended and leave, and it won't give you the opportunity to beat it. In order to know how to beat the Sphinx, you look at the pot that you had delivered to the guy. He will be in Batal in a mural by the Sphinx. The guy himself will mention that beating the Sphinx is more than just a game of wits. There's more to it than that. And if you look at the pot, the pot has the head and chest of the Sphinx undamaged, but the rest of its body has marks. To defeat the Sphinx, attack its body where it has a bunch of jewelry on it. It'll have it on its main body, on its arms, on its tail, on its wings. And as you do more damage to those places, they'll become visibly wounded. The places will have minor cuts and scars and such. Once you see that you've scarred and wounded one area, you can move on to another unwounded area. Don't attack the head, don't attack the chest. And if you fight it in this way, the Sphinx will drop its key to the big chest. And that will give you the optimal result for the entire quest. Alright, that's the end of this video. As always, thank you very much for watching.